My first match of the day starts off with a bunch of toxicity and uh, ragers going up against a, uh, well, much more relatively calm and collected team. And uh, I can't wait to show you guys. This was uh, the very first match that I joined today. I was I was out there scouting for games as I am often one to do. And this one really took center fold. Welcome back to the Brightworks, ladies and gentlemen, where today, already starting off here, we've got some uh, teammates infighting on the red team. Dollar, dollar rep getting a... Uh, a harshly worded mail from all of his teammates here saying that he's a a troll a thrower <laughs> and uh not sure exactly what what is going on here but uh excited to see what's going to happen either way looks like we've already got plans for t1 and t2 cons spawning in the furthest back position here spawning in the uh, either the air or the tech position here on supreme straits it's going to be aloxius aloxius is the red team leader here despite being an armada commander going to be going for those uh, three metal extractors into a couple of wind turbines. We'll check back in later to see what tech path we're going to indeed go for, or if it's going to be air. Meanwhile, spawning on the other side of the world, actually not in a mirrored position here, but on the ceiling position, we have the blue team leader, an armada commander, and it's going to be Immort. Not Immortal, not Immortan, just Immort. Or maybe it's just I'm Immort. Maybe maybe his name is Mort, and, and he's just announcing himself. That's also a possibility. <laughs> Either way, Mort in the C-Lane position, and uh, it's a tricky one. Yeah, you uh, you have a lot of options in the C-Lane, of course. Uh, one of them being rushing out here and trying to get boats in the water and then building your economy up behind that. He would be going up against Piggy here, the uh, orange player for the red team, who is already in the, in the water and highlighting exactly why it is so difficult to play the C-Lane position here, because you end up going up against someone who already has an established navy out, so you're sort of on the back foot for essentially the entire game. Now one way you can make up for that difference, of course, is by securing this this island over here that gives you an extra three metal extractors, or a, uh, what would that be, two, four, six, roughly seven metal per second boost over the uh, economy here of the uh, player on the beachhead. So that's one one option for uh, y using that advantage to, to leverage, or using that position rather closer to this island to uh, leverage yourself into a more advantageous position here on the navies. Meanwhile, up north, it's going to be the Scout 666 going on up against the Emu. Uh, the Emu already in the water. Same thing as the other uh, the other side here. Of course, this map is mirrored, so uh, you, you have sort of the same positions all over the place, and the Emu already has that lab out in the water, but the Scout 666 is going for a much more further forward, uh, a much more aggressive advancement here towards the naval lab. You can see him marching forward there and starting to build that over in that corner. Meanwhile, Immort is way, way further behind, but of course he went for a little bit more production back here. He's got the bot lab pumping out some constructors. Those are going to help build the economy, if I had to guess. Uh, no, they're not, actually. Well, this one's going to build a uh, construction turret. This one's going to build a couple of metal extractors and then some light laser turrets. And somebody is eventually going to come build up here. <laughs> That's great. This is a, a really, really huge advantage. Uh, this, this geothermal, getting that up and running early on, allows you to get naval units up and running very quickly. Middle of the map here, it's going to be Snehopan and Goph going up against Quack and Dr. Frog. Dr. Frog and Quack for the blue team, Goph and Snehopan for the red. Quack moving in for the D-Gun here, trying to shut down any of these uh, light tower defenses before they have a chance to establish themselves, but taking a little bit of damage on the commander for it, so uh, a, little, a little bit risky there, but definitely not the end of the world. Typically, the way that this is... this. Uh, alignment goes is something like this that's kind of how this front line is held uh, technically this map is is mirrored around this axis which i point out uh sometimes but it's uh it's usually more convenient to go along this first diagonal line um, in this direction just because of the way that these metal extractors are positioned wow uh, a little bit of a misstep there from dr frog who does lose the commander on the front line to a light laser tower and uh some rocket bots here Light laser tower. It's a, uh, a silver star hero, almost one XP. That's uh, that's a powerful laser tower you got right there. Rocket bots are going to easily sweep away all of this, giving Goph a massive advantage as far as metal is concerned. He needs to start upping his economy immediately. This is right around the time where I would recommend you pump out an extra constructor and send two of them to just go start building advanced solar panels. Right around 100 or 200 energy production is typically a good time for that. Goph is just sending the metal back to his team though, so everyone is going to be benefiting from that very, very early commander kill. This is also a really weird position for Quack, because now he has enemies marching on behind him, as well as enemies on the front harassing him. Uh, does he have vision of that? 
Not really. I mean, he can intuit it, right? He sees the rockets. <laughs> he doesn't have the uh, doesn't have full vision over this area. He doesn't have a radar down yet, so he doesn't ha doesn't see those blops. But uh, yeah, he uh, he he can certainly sniff out that there's some rocket bots pressuring on this side of the map. This is a really tough position. What do you do here? I mean, your options are essentially you can push in with the uh, you can you can keep this this pos position here. You can. Uh, and then you are sort of almost entirely surrounded by enemy forces here. Or you can retreat back to this line back here, but then you're giving up two of these metal extractors that are 4.3 metal per second. And that's a really huge metal bonus, especially for a player that's gone for vehicles. So it's a, yeah, it's a tricky, tricky decision here that Quack is going to have to make. Meanwhile, in the Southern Sea, there's actually quite a few more dolphins for a mort than there are any, uh, any uh, frigates or gunboats or anything like that here for Piggy. I think the uh, navy is certainly in the favor of Immort right now, but of course attacking across this massive sea is very, very dangerous. You have to have well more than enough troops to, uh, to, to fight that fight, but also resurrect or reclaim off of the sea floor, because if you uh, lose half your army in the trip there, then they will be pumping out reinforcements. Their army is constantly growing, your army is constantly shrinking, uh, and if that imbalance is too heavy, then you end up in a losing scenario. We've seen that too many times to count here. Looks like the Emu has solidly secured a uh, naval position over here. Looks like we do have a couple of ships that went down over here. So the, uh, the the forces of the Scout 666 did try to hold on for their lives, but uh, were not able to in the very end. And that's going to give Emu the position that they're going to need in order to make some critical decisions here. Either go for T2, can either go for uh, land-based economy if you want to just make a whole transition. Very critical that you get your naval players some uh, T2, some yeah, well, some land-based T2 to upgrade these metal extractors, especially for your sea lane player, uh, because as you can see, these sea lane players have tons of metal extractors that they can upgrade to T2, and it's going to make it way easier for them in the naval field. And more, moving the commander over here, are going to try and go for a little bit of a capture on this island, taking some damage from these missile corvettes, but I think he will be fine. It's like 1% damage, 1 or 2% damage off that commander every time that those missiles fire, so it's not really the end of the world. I'm uh, going to go ahead and bail on that. I guess he realizes that was his friend capturing all this, not his enemy. Uh, commander dives back into the water. There's actually no anti-submarine, well, anything here, so... Uh, for the time being, that commander is actually going to be able to force back these units if they don't want to take consistent blue lasered hull damage. <laughs> this is quite nice. Yeah, Piggy has managed to capture all of these metal extractors all over here. Typically, these are contested either by this player back here or by the uh, naval player here. So the fact that he managed to grab both of those, or well, all three of those, and I guess this one too, uh, that's going to be a nice little metal advantage here. That, coupled with the 21 title power, is going to mean that playing in the Navy is a uh, really key position here. Oh, looks like the T2 lab was, uh... T2 lab was eaten up there. Unfortunate. Meanwhile, T2 was handed out from the back line over here. <laughs> it's a, uh... It's, it's teamwork. Team teamwork versus team, uh, you know... Fend for yourself. <laughs> I guess we'll see which strategy works out better in the end here. I'm excited to see. Well, that's annoying. A, uh, a flamethrower turret was built up here. I, I thought that was just a wall. No, it's a flamethrower turret. That explains why there's no geothermal up here all of a sudden. Yeah, a flamethrower turret must have gotten the kill over here. No convenient way to deal with that either. That is a uh, that is an incredibly inconvenient flamethrower turret. I'm going to have to remember that. Yeah, you use a construction ship and you can just build up on this ledge here. Interesting. Wow, Quack did manage to hold this line. That's very impressive. The uh, metal extractor has gone down here, I think, a couple of times. This this uh, 4.3 right here. But still managing to hold this 4.3 back in his uh, sort of midline is, is still well worth uh, negotiating the offense here on the front. He needs reinforcements, though, and pretty much ASAP. There's, uh, there's an army caving in on him now, and the grunts are starting to whittle their way in. Whoa, do we have a... Oh, we have an agitator that was built back here. That's very far back. I guess it's kind of nice, though. It does shut down essentially everything over here. Yeah, and Quack is going to be forced to retreat. Now, he sort of bought himself a little bit of time here by holding up there rather than holding back here because these units are going to... Well, they should be pushing forward here, but they're not at the very least for the time being. Um, yeah, continuing to apply pressure here would be great. However, you can see that uh, Gof is now holding the front line essentially single-handedly. <laughs> uh, Gof and the single thug here for Snehopon have uh, secured the front lines, and it's going to be a uh, going to be a yellow straight at least for the time being. 
what did the emu decide to do? Uh, looks like we have T2 on the production docket here. We're gonna start building that advanced naval facility. We're gonna eat up our T1 naval facility. Makes a lot of sense. Did we ever get T2? We sure did. All right, great. So we're going up to T2 in the back line as well here. Uh, checking in on our backline heroes over here. Looks like Eloxius has gone for tech, I want to say. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, MM Bobo went for air, so I guess Eloxius went for the tech. Uh, that makes sense. Typically, players that are a little more familiar with this game are afforded the privilege of teching just because they uh, they know how to do it a little bit of, a little bit more efficiently, uh, or at the very least in a way that can uh, net you a, a positive outcome here. Artillery units raining down hellfire. <laughs> Thugs, though, they're, uh, they're, they're a unit, and so they're able to move. Unlike static defense, which is the uh, main purpose for artillery units like this, uh, the thugs are able to walk out of the field of fire of those uh, those heavy hitter artillery and just you know retreat backwards, get repaired back up to normal, and uh, they'll be they'll be all the more grateful for it. Single destroyer in this composition, uh, not enough to shut down four submarines. I don't think. I think the submarines win that fight if it's a straight up engagement. I think I would love to see a couple of submarines mixed into the uh, into the composition here. Yeah, I think if Piggy went for just two or three submarines, he'd be able to handily take control over all of this. Only a single destroyer here for Immort, however, Immort is also getting that T2 economy up one by one here. Every one of these that comes online is, of course, going to boost his economy four times. Uh, well, each one will boost its individual metal extraction by four times anyways. Copying the strategy over here and going for a lightning turret, that's quite funny. This lightning turret cannot actually hit this heavy laser turret, so that's a... Uh, I guess a fair way of dealing with that, although it will take a while. That's funny, we have a mirrored harassment on both sides here. <laughs> oh, what a goofy match. Submarines finding their engagement that they're hoping for here, oh, although one of them will get picked off. Would love to see those peeled back, but all in all, that's a, uh, a fairly minor critique here. Submarines managed to whittle this destroyer down to just 31% health, and it's going to be forced to back off, and I guess the entire naval cadre will have to follow suit. Meanwhile, a little bit of uh, sideways aggression over here. Some dolphins accompanied by Elsa and their uh, alone Corsair will take down all the torpedo launchers that were built over in that direction. Middle of the map has been reclaimed here. Those artillery, yep, there they go. You can see, uh, raining on static defense, they do much, much better here. And uh, Quack is going to be able to, yeah, very, very uh, steadily reclaim this center line. However, we already have T2 hounds out and on the battlefield. Not looking good here for the uh, the blue forces. That's a lot of medium tanks, but those hounds are quite mobile. They can certainly outpace those uh, those tanks if they're really on top of it. Uh, they're going to be even better, though, against all this artillery. These are not siege units, or uh, assault units, rather. Oh, but that's a massive minefield right there. The hounds walk right into this giant cluster of mines that were set up, and that will be all of them going down to just, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five different medium landmines. Devastatingly efficient right there, shutting down a ton of aggression that was coming out of this player. That is a uh, that is a sudden shift here for the blue team. They're going to be able to uh, recover now. Those hounds those hounds posed quite a risk where now they are uh, little more than dust and debris laying across the battlefield. Again, so many submarines perfectly counters this composition here. So many of these uh, riptides, the Cortex Assault Frigate. Uh, which, of course, do not have a depth charge launcher. Only the destroyers have a depth charge launcher, and then, of course, submarines have their torpedo launchers. So we're, we really desperately need to see some sort of transition here into the uh, an under the sea, as they say. Nice economy being built over here. This, uh, this could be all popped with a, a, f a relatively little force, though, I have to say. One or two torpedoes into the middle of this energy cluster, and you're going to have essentially a dead base. Containment efforts are functional, though, and we can see that in the uh, the torpedoes and the uh, torpedoes and the the volley of Gauss fire that's being flung around over here. These uh, missile missile corvettes are also quite nice because they provide vision, which allows for a decent uh, engagement with some of these longer range, heavy hit, heavier hitting ships. Sorry, I had to mute myself to clear my throat. Didn't wanna didn't wanna give you guys that ASMR experience. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, we do have red subs here. That's quite nice. I was going to say, it'd be really, really nice if we could see the, uh, the red subs in action here starting to eat up a lot of the metal that's being left over from this engagement. I think if Piggy is able to eat up that metal, this engagement turns in his favor, um, and vice versa for Immort. I think if Immort had res subs included already, then eating up from the tail end of this forward would have allowed him to reinforce a whole lot quicker. That being said, this trade is not bad, and you can see so many destroyers going down here. Missile ships also going down. Uh, Corsair is going down. Just basically everything is going down. Or not Corsairs, uh, Riptides, rather. Those are, those LSODs are getting quite uh, scuffed up here at the moment. You can see these red subs making all the difference, though, as a lot of this metal is just going right back into Piggy's uh, bank. No pun intended. More hounds are finally out on the front line. Hopefully they'll be a little more wary about walking into that landmine field. You never know, though. <laughs> it's easy to forget. Very, very easy to forget. Yeah, these hounds are being much more cautious, though. Just trying to shell away at any of these tanks or anything that they can find. Uh, it's easy to forget, but remember that those gunslingers are also very, very potent, especially against T1 medium tanks. They're extremely, extremely powerful. Three or four gunslingers is able to shut down effectively this entire push uh, relatively quickly. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's a very powerful unit, but it does have sort of a niche. It's not as versatile as the, uh, the Hound is, but it's a little bit more, a little bit more specific. But for that, you, uh, you get a, a much more powerful unit when used correctly. Missile ship, so, so annoying here. Uh, Emu went up to that T2 naval lab and of course is going to start raining down gaunts of fire uh, on top of all of this here and the, the missiles will shred apart the base of Gof, who's now going to be forced to retreat here. This is always a tough position to play as, uh, playing in this, this spot right here, mirrored of course to this spot on the map. If you lose your C, the, uh, the, the enemy has the, well, has, has an open engagement line directly into your base, right? There's, a, there's essentially a clear path that they can take to get right into your main production facility so oftentimes we see these players moving back into this area that is oftentimes unoccupied as we can see here um, and that's usually a great move not one that i'd be surprised to see go for me because he just abandons most of that front line here in order to uh survive fighters are sent in but the t1 fighters as well as the t2 will ignore that fighter wave they sense the bombers coming this is some beautiful airplay the fighters get on top of those bombers remembering their training lessons their programming kicks in they realize Wait a minute, we don't want to fight the fighters, we want to fight the bombers, and now that bombing run has been shut down so cleanly. Whoa, a little bit of a chuggies there, sorry about that. Excellent little air maneuver right there from Celia, showing us just how to get it done with a inferior fighter force managing to shut down a bombing run that otherwise could have been quite devastating. Very nicely done. Really love to see that. Ducks are the weapon of choice here, and uh, they're quite good. Ducks are, are one of the most powerful uh, amphibious units that are available. Their their torpedo comes out of their their, th their throat. <laughs> I was trying to think of a, a word for it, but I mean, yeah, they, it comes out of their heads, uh, which means that they can fire their torpedo essentially omnidirectionally, which is a very rare capability, actually. Um, I think they might be the only unit that can do that, aside from, I mean, sort of the torpedo launcher, but even that has to point its, its kind of mouthpiece towards the enemy, so. Um, yeah, oh, that was weird. See that depth charge there? Just bounce off the sea. How odd. <laughs> Gov's commander giving the uh, vision over here, but the tech swarm has already begun encroaching here. Ah, uh, okay. So we went for a Marauder Rush off of three fusion reactors. It's at this point that you start eating these and turn them into an advanced fusion reactor, but I guess it is uh, all hands on deck to pump out Marauders as quickly as possible here from Dollar Rep. We're going to have to see if that will be worth it or not here uh, in just a little while. Commander goes down to a very, very nice push here. There is a Sumo here to defend. Sumo's, of course, very powerful units. Ooh, kind of a targeting mishap there. It's trying to attack that lightning tank, but it should probably go after this medium tank here. Eventually, it'll figure it out and it'll start blasting away. A couple of ticks do manage to run through here. Uh, they'll get eaten up, but uh, it's still a nice amount of vision here. Uh, Sumo marching forward into these uh, artillery pieces. It's, I mean, it's not really that bad of a trade. Yeah, the sumo is probably more than happy to take out those artilleries. Marauder will be pulled to clean this up, though. All right. Not bad. I think those were being saved up for some sort of sneak, sneak attack, some sort of surprise aggression on uh, one side or another of the map. I don't think that's really where we were hoping to use the marauders, but I think it'll probably work uh, just fine here as a lot of this stuff is just artillery and T1 
which both of which can be cleaned up quite nicely by the marauders streaming through the middle of the map, as you can see here. Tearing apart a lot of that T2 artillery and that T1, uh, even the medium tanks fall pretty quickly here to the marauders. That was a very, very uh, efficient engagement with these marauders. I think it's time we pulled them back, though. Yeah, don't want to push too far here. Don't want to lose them, um, or at least lose too many. Uh, yeah, four or five of them went down there. I'm not sure if that's justifiable. That might have been too expensive. Maybe pulling back a second earlier would have been a little bit better here. But all things considered, the relief on the front line cannot be understated. That is going to allow these players to rebuild here. Goaf specifically, who's, who was again ravaged by those missile ships over in this area, uh, up north of his base. Essentially holding the line here with hopes and dreams. <laughs> Ducks trying to get a little bit of engagement here as they march around the side of the map. Meanwhile, looks like our uh, orange player down south here has gone all the way up to T2. And it looks like the same plan is sort of coming together here for Mort, who is also going, or Immort rather, who uh, is also going up to T2. He went to, for a T2 lab on uh, on land here. Wouldn't mind seeing him eat that up just for the metal gain. Could turn that T2, uh, T2 bot lab into a T T2 naval lab relatively easily. Wouldn't mind seeing that whatsoever. Buccaneers are already out. They fire a dual torpedo launcher, which is very powerful. They also have a uh, heavy laser tower and two light laser towers mounted on top of them. Uh, and they can dish out a tremendous amount of damage when amassed in significant enough numbers. Marauders will clean up all those artillery that we're pushing in. Not sure why we were using artillery as assault units there, but either way, they will be cleaned up quite quickly. These missile ships, though, proving to be so annoying. They really can just rain away from so far. Such a dangerous unit, yeah. The scout is sort of slacking here in terms of... Uh, what, what these ducks are being used for. He tried to send them around the map, but they just got shut down by torpedo bombers and uh, paladins up north. I think exactly as Bruce is highlighting here, these units should come down south here. Yeah, this is more than enough damage. We've shut down two fusion reactors and might get a third one here. 1% uh, health remaining on that. A single volley would take that out. Bruce's commander caught in the uh, explosion of his, uh, his way too closely clumped together windmill field here. Things are, things are falling apart quickly for the red team. These Marauders are sort of the only saving grace here on the front line, but as soon as these T2 tanks get out there, they even struggle against those a little bit here. With the artillery fire support, you can see that these uh, medium tanks are quite sturdy. Yep, the Marauders are going to be forced to retreat once more. Not the best engagement either from those. Ooh, torpedo bombers over here. Dropping on top of Piggy. Very nicely done with the air support here from Eucelia. Time and time again, providing the uh, the correct air support at the correct position here, shutting down those uh, bombers earlier, and then now shutting down a lot of these uh, a lot of these boats over in this direction. Very nicely done. The tech is coming up here. We do have a uh, looks like Eloxius has actually already gone into T2 air. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like uh, M, M M Bobo, or yeah, M M, M, M Bobo, or maybe just M Bobo, M Bobo, Bo 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 Bo. That was a show, wasn't it? Is that a Japanese show? I can't remember. Anyways, <laughs> both of them have gone into air. That's the uh, the relevant point that I was uh, attempting to make there. Uh, both of them have gone into air, so they're going to try and go for aerial supremacy. But the question is, how will they use it? Uh, if they're able to do significant damage to anyone on the front line, that would be nice, opening those up. We, I would also love to see a Juno right here. One Juno missile could take out all of those landmines, or just about all of them anyways, and that would be a, uh, that'd be a nice way to open that path up, maybe allow these Marauders an opportunity to attack. Um, right now, they're just forced to stay on this front line, because as soon as they move away, the pressure is reapplied, so they're kind of the, uh, the band-aid on the open wound, so to speak. No economy growth back here, though, and that is a real problem. Yeah, we just kind of are fully committed to producing these uh, Marauders, but I really think this T2 should start working on an APHIS back here, start working on a couple more uh, energy converters, have a couple of these peeled off and start working on tearing down one of these energy uh, producers here, one of these fusion reactors. I think uh, that's, that's, how you, that's how you cement your advantage here. Use the Marauder to hold the line, and then you start to, uh, you start to use that time to grow. Paladins will eventually shut down these ducks. Those depth charge launchers are heat seeking and they're quite powerful, so uh, eventually going to be able to shut down the uh, the underwater menace here. 
but already tons of damage has been done with these missile ships. I would say they've definitely well been justified. Essentially killing one player here and another one on the front line here. Goph is still rebuilding, but he doesn't have nearly enough energy production. Would love to see some windmills from somebody maybe in the back line handed over here, making sure to uh, keep everybody in the game. But at the time being, oh yeah, and it looks like Bruce was going to go for some sort of unit spam, but just is nowhere near the economy for it anymore. Still working on a, a fusion reactor. That's a bit odd. We uh, we need to we need to call ourselves back into the game here. The build power is a great addition. That's definitely what we need more than anything else. Uh, okay, so Marauders are being streamed out of the back line too. Scarecrow has gone for a healthier economy. Has produced a bunch of Marauders, but I guess has since taken down the T3 lab in favor of... <coughs> pardon me. Uh, spiking the economy once more. Uh, nicely done. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Go for a little bit and then uh, go back into ecoing. Go for a little bit more. Go back into ecoing. So that sort of that sort of push and pull balance definitely defines it. Still a massive naval battle down here. We've already got well and proper T2 equipment here for Piggy. Uh, meanwhile, T2 is a little bit further behind here for the forces of Immort, who of course has gone for a little bit more land-based economy, which is quite nice. Now, Piggy is going for that advanced fusion reactor over here, which is quite nice. Once it finishes up, of course, it's going to power all of these, certainly. That's uh, 79 energy converters. Not advanced energy converters, just regular energy converters. Um, that's very powerful. Certainly, 79 metal per second would, would be nothing to scoff at. The marauders are ready. These are Scarecrow's Marauders, and they're primed to engage here. There are a couple of advanced metal exploiters, or advanced exploiters here. The uh, armed metal extractors. Ah, uh, yeah, but nowhere near enough power production at the moment. The Marauders make their move. Storming up the beaches like this is always such a dangerous task. You never know what you're going to face on this side. You never know if this player has just been porking for the last 25 minutes and is going to have, you know, bulwarks and pulsars and... Uh, you know, whatever else, static defense to uh, shut you down or whether it's going to be a free ride. It looks like, in this specific example, it was a free ride indeed, as these Marauders have now swept through the uh, northern side of the red team here, and they're going to pop the pink player's base like a bulb. Down goes all the build power, the wind turbines follow suit, the T2 lab collapses, the advanced fusion reactor blueprint goes down, and the uh, Marauders continue their way up north here. Gunships are rapidly streamed out by Aloxius, who is uh, going to have to deal with these Marauders that are now in the back line, dealing damage. Oh, looks like uh, Bruce's commander was sniped there as well. The heat is on Aloxius now to deal with these Marauders. He gets a nice D-gun there, takes out two of them, takes out two more, another one, and a fourth one with his commander explosion. There's still three more headed towards his base, though. Uh, are they going to be able to do it? Oh, they jump on the advanced fusion reactor. There goes the build power. That's quite dangerous. There's still plenty of Mara Marauders left alive here. Boom goes the base, and there will be Aloxius down and out for the count. Scarecrow's Marauder attack, taking out two players, and uh, pretty badly scuffing up a third over here. Was to say this guy might still be dead? Yeah, pretty much, effectively still dead. Oh, interesting. Marauder right over here uh, managed to sneak by for Dollar Rep. Uh, also collapsed the Navy here for the blue player. The uh, red player decided to just send in his fighters. He uh, had had enough of this game and decided it's time to just send them in and do some damage. And uh, those fighters will now hover over the base of Eucelia, who does not actually have a great way of dealing with them. Yeah, no uh, no, no ground-based constructors, so really all he has... Oh, no, he does have a T2. Okay, just gonna flactor it up and you'll be all, all good. Lone Marauder over here shut down all of the ground-based economy for a Mort. That was an excellent little play right there. Very, very nicely done. T1 is streaming out of here. It's a bunch of ticks. Um, do we have the economy for that? Not quite. We don't have the energy for it, actually, at the time being. Probably because we're going for quite a lot of uh, energy converters over here, which, frankly, I think we're going to need the energy that we've got in order, to, uh, in order to produce those units. Marauder was shut down over here. That hero Marauder. Uh, but the front lines are essentially all disintegrated. That's that's the main problem here. Um, yeah, what do we have? I mean, these are probably all lightning turrets, right? Yeah, okay, so we've got five lightning turrets. That's definitely enough to shut down T1 spams at the very least. Uh, we've got 
a, uh, a cloaker here. We've got a chainsaw and we've got some metal extractors. Aside from that, there's basically nothing to hold a push here. I mean, yeah, no, uh, no, no real auxiliary units able to, uh, to hold anything. And I think that's what these lightning tanks are about to discover. Lightning tanks are essentially the perfect counter to, uh, tick swarm. They're great at swimming up the tick stream because you can, uh, well, their, their attack chain reacts and also they can fire relatively quickly so they can manage to push into a, uh, a tick stream without too much damage here. They also, of course, ignore shields. They are not a plasma attack, and so they will be able to push on through and uh, do a little bit of damage over here, perhaps. Uh, there is actually some scorpion batteries. There's a lot of scorpion batteries, so they will shut that down pretty quickly here. Oh, somehow or another, though, the uh, overseer did go down. I'm not sure exactly what even killed it there, but the overseer goes down, meaning that these are very vulnerable to plasma attacks here, as well as the... St oh, it was probably a starlight that sniped it. It's very quick. It's easy, easy for me to miss. Starlights will continue ravaging everything over here. The Vanguard's also contributing a lovely bit of fire support here. And the pink front line is quickly collapsing. A little Marauder run by over here. Dollar Rap trying to make something happen here. He's got the Marauders out. He's got a nice little cluster of them too. That's going to be a grand total of 15 Marauders. Uh, definitely more than enough to do some damage over here. So we'll have to see what he can get done. Currently these Marauders are on a uh, crash course right through the middle of the remainder of the Mort's ground-based economy here. Essentially, everything he has left is going to be sweeped across by these Marauders and their rapid-fire multi-shot Gauss cannons. Uh, and that will be his last two constructors as well, also being caught in the crossfire here. I think we should split these. I think we should send half of them up north and half of them down south here. Try and pop these advanced fusion reactors. Does he actually see those advanced fusion reactors? Uh, he does know about them from a previous scout, so he is going to be able to jump on top of them. Peeling off the majority of them is two enough. Uh, uh, yeah, they're still getting damage in. Okay. Yep, still doing damage here. I think it's going to be enough. Two Marauders managed to pop the entire base here of Chaos Unleashed. More Marauders headed inside here. Scarecrow is going to have to deal with this. He has to send the commander right now. He needs a miracle of a D-gun to take down all these Marauders. They're going to get the build power over here. That's quite dangerous. Yep, build power goes down. They do spy the uh, commander over here. Oh, no, the commander's way too close. Commander's right on top of the Aphises. Oh, no. Pop. <laughs> Absolutely epic, epic explosion right there. The uh, the Marauders realized that they had their target. It was the commander. Popped the advanced fusion reactors, destroying the entire base right there for Scarecrow. That'll be him out of the game here. And now we've got sort of an even kill speed here, or kill, uh, kill list here. But there's still forces pushing in. Fighters sweeping over this area. Trying to protect it from air, but eventually that advanced fusion fusion reactor will go down. It pops, takes out all of the energy converters, all of the build power, everything that made Dollar Rep's base go is now reduced to ruin. Gunships trying their very best to clean this up, but those hornets are not especially good against those T1 uh, or T2 medium tanks. They're, they're decent against the T1 medium tanks. They're not great against the T2 medium tanks. And that is the red team going to be forced to resign as they essentially have nobody else with any heavy hitting T3 units. What an amazing back and forth. A naval contest over on this sea that was hard fought and lasted the majority of the game. A uh, oppressive naval victory up north here. Tons of back and forth marauder attacks. Beautiful air control over on the northern side of the map. What a game to show off all games. Thanks a ton for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know down below. Do you think uh, toxicity is uh, valid? Or do you think that the uh, the cooperative team here ended up with the victory in the end? Let me know down below. Love to hear from you guys. Anyways, this has been the Brightworks, and I will see you in the very next video.